Yeah, so the first question is, Lord Shippers love this verse. James 2.20 is so emphatic when it says, and the NIV puts it the worst, you foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Please untwist. Why was James so strong in this particular verse? Mm -hmm. All right, we'll start with Sister Renee. Untwist that for us. Okay, you? well, I'll untwist it. All right. First, so let's, uh, out of my memory, I believe this letter was written to who? The 12 tribes of Israel scattered abroad. So that is who this is written to. Secondly, I hear James calling them brethren in several places. This tells me what? They are believers. They are saved already. So I want to remind people that you can be saved or have salvation from things other than hell. Like when Peter fell in the water and said, Lord, save me. Was he saying, save my soul? No, he was saying, hey, I'm drowning. Save me. Same thing in the scriptures. You can be saved uh, of more than one thing. You can also be justified in more than one way. Now, I know Luke and I have a difference of opinion on this. However, I do believe it's possible uh, uh, his position. And so I'll let him explain that. What I believe this book is actually about is living faith. It's about discipleship. It is to motivate the saved Hebrews to make their faith a living faith, a profitable faith that allows them to be justified to the world as people of faith. That's why he gives so many examples of wasn't Abraham justified when he offered Isaac on the altar? But Paul clearly says, if Abraham was justified by works, he'd have wear of the glory, but not before God. So it's not before God that Abraham was justified. His faith was made perfect or mature. So when you see perfect or a man was perfect, it means that his he was mature in his faith. He was uh, uh, had living faith that was profitable to service uh, to God. Now, when faith, if it's without works, is dead being alone. Does that mean you don't have faith? If the faith was non-existent, it wouldn't be dead or alive. It just wouldn't exist. But the faith being dead is a way of saying that faith is just laying there on the floor like a dead dog. Is the dog non-existent? No, he's alive. I mean, he's not alive, but he's there. So the faith, the issue here is that the faith without the works was unprofitable and not a faith that was productive. There's a lot of talk about producing fruit and so forth. So this is about service and discipleship and faith maturing. All right. So it's an encouragement. Uh, and he's speaking to Israelites that believe on Jesus, right? So let's look at the verse. What was that, guys? Uh, James 2 what? Uh, 220. 220. So in the King James, is, but wilt thou, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? I'd say yes, it is. Because saved people are saved with what purpose? What did Jesus say? I'm the vine, you are the branches. If you do this and that, you'll have much fruit, right? He didn't mean for his people to be lazy and not tell anybody about Jesus and not feed the poor, and not do the good works. We are saved unto good works. So our purpose here on earth as his children is to be profitable, right? So your faith without those works is dead. It's not doing anything. It's just not functioning. It doesn't do any service. And so uh, when it says, that faith without works is dead. Wasn't Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac? Now, here's the verse that'll make my point. See thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. You see that? His faith was perfected, made mature, turned into something profitable. All right? That's why you'll hear things in James like, what doth it profit? my brethren what good is it what does it produce nothing so faith without works is dead i would agree with that 
But what James is not saying is faith without works means you're not saved or that faith requires your works to be saved. None of that. These are saved people. All right, let's see his last word here. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Absolutely. Absolutely. A body, we are the body of Christ. If we are not doing the works we're saved to do, it, it's unprofitable. It's like being dead. The body's dead. It's not moving. It's not producing. It's not doing anything. So uh, sadly, people, uh, especially Catholics, take this verse and say, see, regardless of the hundreds of verses that say it's not my righteousness, it's not how I live, it's not what I'm doing, it's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. It's for him that worketh not, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. They ignore all those and say, see this one verse, it means you have to have works to be saved. But these people are already saved. I need people to see that. They are already saved. And it's about, again, let me read the one verse right after it. See thou how faith wrought with his works. And by works was faith made perfect. Faith is matured by works. Faith is uh, shown to be profitable to the service of God and, and man. Without it, your faith is dead. It's not doing anything in the service of the body of Christ. That's all. Okay, thank you, sister. Um, all right, brother Jordan, let's hear your thoughts on this. Oh yeah, I could pop off about this one. <laughs> this this is the go-to verse, and Renee alluded to it. The first verse that you got to go to in the books of James is James one one. The twelve tribes scattered abroad. So now I am probably in the minority of this view. I believe the James that wrote this was not the brother of Jesus, but the disciple. You know, we see books written by James, Peter. Um, his three close inner circles. So I think it only makes sense that we would see a letter from James um, and then the multitude of, from John. And James, as we know, was persecuted before he before they had that meeting in Acts 15 where they really got on the same page of the gospel. So what you'll notice about the book of James, which is very interesting, is there's elements missing that you don't see in some of these other letters about the gospel. So that's the conclusion I've arrived at. But another thing to remember is that the, that Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. Does that mean we cannot learn anything from these other letters? Absolutely not. All scripture is good for reproof and correcting. But we have to remember that God had a very specific way of dealing with the Jews. And we see that all throughout Acts. Um, I say that as a preface. Um, when it comes to the context of James 2, what we need to realize is we're looking at faith on a, a latitude level. We are seeing how man can see that we are redeemed. God sees us redeemed through our heart. Man sees us redeemed through our actions. So if I'm walking by a homeless person and I just choose to not stop and do anything for him, is faith alone going to save him? No, there has to be works. And Catholics will twist that to say, Oh, faith alone. And this is my favorite. When you bring up um, the whole sola fide, faith alone, they'll say, well, actually, the scripture does say faith alone. It only says it one time. It's, it's, be quiet with that. <laughs> so that's my thoughts about the context of James 2 overall. We have to remember that it's all about putting forth works to bring God glory, because through our works, through our actions, through our love, through our understanding, which are fruits missing from a lot of your Lordship salvation people, that is what's going to draw people to Christ. That is what's going to preach the gospel through your actions. Now, the other thing I want to address here, because this viewer writes in specifically about the NIV version, get rid of the NIV version. That's absolutely the, one of the worst versions. It's the reason for so many false teachings today. Um, I understand there are some KGB or KJV only is. I understand that there are not. Regardless of where you fall on that spectrum, you do not want a thought for thought translation. You definitely don't want a paraphrase translation. You want a word for word translation. If you are 
adhering to the Textus Receptus as the pure reserved text for the Christians today, of course, your KJV is a great translation. If you are looking for the other texts, um, the vast manuscripts, you know, um, the NSAB is a great one, but you want to get as close to the word for words. How I, if there is a verse that I'm really struggling with, I kind of do a backwards formula. I start with something like the NSAB, ESV, just to see how they would word that in our common language used today, but then I'll work back to the KJV and see how they uh, translate it. And then I also have this right here, the interlinear Bible, which will really uh, break down word for word what it says. So if you really want to know what scripture says and brings it into context, you really got to dive deep. Um, I have a lot of great articles archived on my computer about what the NIV has changed in the Bible, what it's left out. If anybody wants a copy of those articles, I can send them out to you tonight. Just send me an email, revivalistforchrist at gmail.com. But the NIV, NLT, horrible translations, the message should not even be on your shelf. Um, so that's what I would have to say about that. Wow. <clears throat> you really blew my mind there, brother. <laughs> that was uh, very impressive. Uh, I didn't think it was possible to uh, uh, start off uh, expressing kind of my viewpoint and then combine Renee's viewpoint uh, together. Renee, did you catch that? You Renee, you still there? I did, I did yeah. Yeah, that was really interesting. Uh, uh, I think your points were very well made and uh, I was gonna try to just say amen to Renee and not divert into my normal uh, James um, um, monologue, but uh, we, we all can agree that the book of James uh, is the go-to book for the, the, uh, the Pharisees, for the Lordshippers, the, uh, the, the, religion i mean let's say christendom all the people who say they're some kind of a christian and yet they're not like us believing we're saved only because of christ not because of our works so all those religions and, and variations of christendom they love the book of james that's their go-to book and it and they they take that verse uh um and another one as uh, that uh jordan mentioned is that well where in the Bible does it say that you're uh, you're saved by faith alone? It, well, it, those words don't c come together except in James, where it says a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. So here we say we're saved by faith alone, and James comes con completely contradicts it, unless we interpret the way that Renee explained it. So I'm I'm okay with that because it's certainly uh, a, a valid. Uh, if if that was the intended meaning of James, whoever he was, uh, then uh, I would say that certainly let's call it um, uh, a valid uh, and um, worthwhile way of looking at what's taught in the book of James. Uh, it certainly is true that uh, if someone needs our help and they're hungry or uh, in, in homeless, and we just uh, we just tell them about Jesus, but we don't we don't do anything other than, than that to help them. They're going to question whether this is any there's any value in this. So the only way that it's valuable to them is if we actually do more than tell them the gospel, but to actually work to help them out of their predicament. So it's it's a valid lesson for us to all learn and apply to our lives. But was it the intention of James when he wrote it? Was that what he was trying to convey? Uh, I, I think the point that uh, Brother Jordan made in the beginning was uh, most people don't realize this, but James was the first book of the New Testament that was penned. And then the next book uh, that was penned was Galatians. And it seemed to me James and Galatians uh, diametrically oppose each other. Uh, and so if you go to my playlist, James and Paul, The Shocking Facts, you'll go, you'll see a, a, a very thorough teaching on why uh, I think that in the intention, intended meaning of uh, the book of James 
was the way the Lord should view it because they hadn't worked that out as Brother Jordan pointed out. These problems, uh, these understanding of the gospel and what Jesus actually accomplished wasn't completely understood by everybody until uh, many years later. I mean, even, even in Acts 15, when they had the Jerusalem Council, uh, that's 20 years after Pentecost. And even then they're arguing you've got to get circumcised to, to be saved. So um, uh, there was a lot of uh, things. Um, there were false teachings uh, in uh, throughout the early church history that uh, thankfully Paul uh, was able to make it clear to us. He, that, that was the main contribution of Paul. He, he says, keep religion separate. Keep your works out of it. If you if, try to include your works, your religious activities as part of your salvation, then you've nullified your salvation because it's got to be entirely faith alone in Christ alone. So uh, I think uh, Renee and uh, Brother Jason Jack uh, also does a wonderful job of explaining that point of view, and it's valid. I just don't think that was the intention of the writer at the time. Uh, okay, uh, you want to say more, Renee or Jordan? Yeah, I, I think the reason they bring this up is because they are under the wrong assumption that those of us, that stand only in the finished work of Christ and say, it doesn't matter what I do, how I live, how much good I do. None of that is assisting me in either getting saved or staying saved. That they make the assumption that we don't want to do the good works, that we are somehow lazy and are encouraging others not to do good works. And it's just a ridiculous it doesn't even make sense. Like Jordan mentioned the other night, if we're so spiritually lazy, why are we spending our Friday night studying scripture and here with 50 other people uh, uh, fellowshipping and, and studying the word of God and, and reaching out to each other and praying for one another and asking, how can we help? How can we be of service? It's just, it's just silly that, that they make that accusation. And we know who the accuser of the brethren is. It's Satan himself. That I don't know any believer that trusts only in Jesus that's actually, you know, uh, interested in their faith um, that would ever say, hey, just live the most wicked life you want. Don't help people. Make it all about yourself. They wouldn't be completely horrified that a Christian actually had that attitude. None of us believe that at all. We just divide the gift of eternal life keep the gospel pure the simplicity in christ and take that separate for what is rewarded or loss of reward um because discipleship and service they are judged but that's not how we're saved that's a whole separate issue we just divide it clearly and they can't seem to get that they they assume that because you're saying your works don't matter in regards to your salvation, that there's no motivation to do anything, but we love him because he first loved us. And we don't want to grieve the spirit and we want to show him we love him back. I, I don't know where they get this uh, idea and accusation about us except from the evil one, because I don't know anybody that doesn't want to do. And all the people that accuse us, like like Luke says, show me your resume. Like, wh what are you doing so great, you know, that you're going to come condemn a, a believer in Christ like that? But that's why they use these verses. And by the way, I want to tell you, it's a straw man argument and a weak one at that to say, where does it say faith alone? The only place I, because Muslims will do that. Where did Jesus say, worship me? I'm God. Okay. Do you want those exact words? because uh, that won't happen because the book's not written in your words. But if you want the concept and him claiming divine status and pre-existence, uh, I'll be happy to show that to you. But they, they want it in the words they want it in. So to say, show me where it says, uh, you go by uh, faith alone. Well, I can. It says, you see how a man is justified without the deeds of the law not by works of righteousness, which we have done. And if it be of works, it's no longer grace. 
Christ is of no effect to you, whosoever are justified by the law. You're fallen from grace. There's many places that say, hey, if you add works, uh, you're not trusting Christ. You're trusting in yourself. You don't believe it's already been finished and resting in that. You're still trying to get something God already said he gave you. So there's many places in scripture that do say faith alone, just not in those words. So that is a straw man argument. It really is. I absolutely agree with that. And that's the one thing that I always go back to. I'll, this is one of the questions that you can get them with. Do you believe in the Trinity? And most will say yes. And it's like, okay, show me where it says Trinity in the Bible. And they can't do it. You know, the that's the problem is, you know, they think they have you trapped with this wording, but that's the beauty of the Bible. You learn full concepts um, once you read it in full. And, you know, you kept mentioning, Renee, about rightly dividing. And, you know, as Christians, that's what we are commanded to do, uh, to do, rightly divide the word of truth, you know, and study to show thyself uh, proved. But I actually had this encounter last week or two weeks ago when I was dealing with the Church of Christ members, because as you guys know, they believe in baptismal regeneration. They believe baptism is necessary. They believe their works are um, necessary. And... The problem is so many people combine justification, which is through faith alone, and sanctification, which is a lifelong process of becoming like Jesus. And I flat out said, the moment you just, or you mix your justification with your sanctification, all you are doing is muddying the water that you are baptized in, and you're going to go to hell wet. So I think it's very important that we don't ignore the hundreds of other verses in the Bible that tells us that we are justified through faith alone. If we are using proper exegesis instead of eisegesis, that is, we're not reading what our beliefs are into the text, and we come across a verse like this, you can rightly divide to learn its context. And you can see just from this conversation that that's not the case. You know, it's not contradicting itself. The Bible never contradicts it contradicts itself the problem is self-righteous men want to be their co-savior because they can't admit that there is no way they can save themselves hmm. amen to that. yeah amen from both of us awesome 